Hello and welcome to the CBT Nuggets training series entitled Microsoft Visio 2010 on the job training. My name is Tim Warner and I'm happy and grateful to be your trainer. In this first agenda nugget, we're going to cover the following topics. I'm going to describe to you how I've designed this course and how you as a student can leverage it for maximum effect with the shortest time investment possible. I know time is important to you as it is to me. By the end of this nugget, you'll also have a great working definition of exactly what Visio is. We're going to cover its product history, where the product fits into the Microsoft Office productivity suite, as well as its most common use in industry. Without any further ado, let's get started. Let me explain to you how I built this course and some suggestions that I'd like to share with you on how you can get the most out of it. First of all, this course, this particular course, is a little bit of a departure from how I ordinarily construct Nugget series. If you've watched some of my other CBT Nuggets training courses on, for instance, Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle Database or MySQL, I tend to follow the standard formula of running through these whiteboard slides to give you the theory and then pop into a computer, one or more computers, to give you demonstrations and practical application of that theory. Well, in this on-the-job training title, I'm going to use a bare minimum of whiteboards. Instead, this course is almost completely demo-based. The bottom line, friends, theory is important in most aspects of IT and will cover theoretical aspects of Visio drawings and Visio use for the IT professional in this course, but the more experience you get day by day working in Visio, the faster your learning curve will transpire and the faster and more efficiently you'll build skills. So I'm going to rely almost entirely on practical demonstrations with which you can play along. The files that we create over the course of this training will be posted to the CBT Nuggets work site. This is at nuggetlab.com. I would encourage you strongly to get up there to nuggetlab.com and download those work files and that way you can work right along with me as we go through the demos. Now who is the audience for this on-the-job training course in Visio 2010? I want you to know that I'm not thinking my ideal student is exactly an end user. Ordinarily Microsoft Office training is for the business end End user. That is to say, someone who probably does not work in information technology or specifically within the IT department, but instead is an ordinary business individual and they use Microsoft Office applications on a daily basis. And those CBT Nuggets training courses, a lot of them are done by my CBT Nuggets colleague and friend Chris Ward, are excellent, no doubt about it. However, I wanted this course in Visio 2010 to be dedicated to the IT professional. Now, by IT IT professional, I'm not drawing a distinction between the developer on one side and the systems admin on the other. Oftentimes, there's a line in the sand, so to speak, that's drawn. This could be within an organization or just corporate culture, whatever, such that developers stick to their side of the fence and administrators stick to theirs. Well, Visio is equally applicable to either of these job roles in IT, and there's more than just admin and dev. There's project manager, there's enterprise architect, there's consultant etc. Bottom line, I'm going to tailor the training and show you how to create specific Visio drawings that are tailored to these information technology skills. So it's nice if you're coming into this training with some practical experience with Microsoft Office applications. I'm not going to assume anything on your background, but I just wanted to let you know we are going to deep dive into the Visio product. My goal for you is by the time you finish this training, you not only know how to get it from point A to point B in Visio, but you understand the underlying architecture of the application such that you can think of multiple ways to get from point A to point B equally efficiently and with lots and lots of extra gloss and polish. After all, Visio documents are meant to be visual representations of business processes. So first of all, we want our diagrams to be legible. We want them to be clear and we want them to be understood by the audience to whom we're delivering those Visio files. But number two, I can tell you, if you add some of those gloss and polish things to make your Visio drawings really sparkle, you're going to dramatically increase your value in the eyes of your customers, your clients, your colleagues, your bosses, etc. To that end, as I mentioned, this course is going to involve several case studies, practical examples. I've built most of the course, a nugget at a time, around specific Visio drawing types. And I looked at IT from as broad a spectrum as I could. We're going to do drawings with IT business 
and just business in general, things like project schedules and organizational charts and calendars. We're going to be doing drawings that pertain to developers, just your regular run-of-the-mill coder or your software architect. We'll be looking at drawings that are applicable to project managers, specifically IT project managers. And of course, we have lots and lots of flexibility and options and drawing types for the systems administrator. So before we go any further, what is Visio exactly? How would you answer that question if someone were to say, hey, I see this Visio shortcut icon in my start menu. What exactly does this software do? Well, the technical answer to that question is that Microsoft Visio is commercial closed source vector diagramming software. That's the nerdy, geeky definition. Perhaps the more user-friendly definition is that Microsoft Visio 2010 enables business process visualization. You've heard that saying, I'm sure, that a picture is worth a thousand words. Something that's pretty hot nowadays that I see in my RSS news feeds almost on a daily basis are graphic images called infographics. These are quite the rage now. It does take a certain skill to be able to put together a good infographic. An infographic is meant to depict and give you potentially a large amount of information in an easy to follow graphical way. Again, it takes that idea that a picture is worth a thousand words. So in business, you have various processes. You could be a systems administrator who wants to have a visual depiction of your current network infrastructure. You want to show each network segment or each subnet. You want to show which devices exist on each subnet. You want to look at connectivity devices, switches, and routers between those elements. And you may actually want to track metadata about the devices depicted in the drawing. You can do all of that in Visio. You may be a software architect. Your company may be tasked with building a piece of software and you want to be able to visualize the workflow for that software build. Again, Visio is optimized for that kind of procedure. Maybe you're a facilities manager and you want to do a schematic of how your heating and air conditioning or HVAC units are set up in your utility rooms. For that matter, you may have some groundskeeping and architectural, physical architectural duties to take care of. So you can do building plan layouts, general purpose purpose maps. The list goes on and on and on and on. I'm going to take it as one of my goals as an instructor to make you as aware as possible of the myriad templates and types of documents that can be created within Visio. The bottom line is, if you can think of a business process that you need to explain to someone, to make clearer, etc. You can visualize that process in Visio in an extremely rich and robust way. Now, the first definition I gave you for Visio, I said that Visio is commercial closed source software. Now, what does that mean? This means that Visio's source code is protected and proprietary. It's owned by Microsoft, so we don't have any community development as such on the application. Those of you who come from Linux and the open source world don't like that, in generally speaking. I I don't want to be too broad with my assumptions here, but that's just the way it is. Now, what does vector diagramming mean? This brings up the issue of graphics types, and for that I'm actually going to switch over to Visio right now, and we'll explain. Now, before you say, Tim, what is this you're showing us? This doesn't look like the Visio that's on my computer. Know that I've made the interface about as minimal as you can get. I've collapsed the ribbon navigation, and I've also minimized the shapes window. I'll show you in an upcoming nugget how we can show and hide the ribbon and tuck the shapes window off to the side. But the purpose of this simple drawing is to show you the difference between vector graphics and bitmap graphics. All of the shapes that we have available to us in Visio stencils are vector images. And what that means is they're composed of lines. You could look at vector graphics as being considered line drawings. And when we work with lines, actually this arc for this example you're looking at, this circle, is is computed not by plotting bits on a grid, but by mathematical formulas. So the take home message is what's cool about vectors is that you can resize them all day long and they remain equally crisp and clear whatever size you go to. That's not the case with things like fonts, text, typefaces ordinarily use bitmaps, picture images, photos like you're seeing here is a bitmap, and this is a fixed field of bits. It's a map of bits. A bit or binary number is a zero or one, but in terms of graphics, we can consider a bit to be a discrete element. Look at the grid on the Visio page. Each little box, imagine being a bit or 
physically on a screen, it would be what's called a pixel or a picture element. And each one of those tiny, tiny little pixel dots would have a value for a discrete color. Now, depending upon the size of the bitmap image, the larger the bitmap image, the more of these little pixels you can fit in and the more detail the picture has and the more flexibility you have in terms of making it larger without losing the crispness of the image. But if I come in really, really close on this image, you can see it's all already starting to what we call pixelate and look really rotten. If we come in even closer yet, it just looks terrible. So my point is, Visio, we want to use vectors as much as humanly possible. Even if you have a corporate logo as a bitmap, you might want to talk to your graphic designer and see if you can get a vector version. Let me do a really close zoom on this circle and you can see how utterly smooth that curve is. And it's going to maintain that curvature no matter what size we make our circle. And resizing is important with Visio diagrams. Sometimes you'll complete your entire drawing and discover, well, that's actually too small. It only takes up a quarter of the page and I want it to fit the entire page. I'm going to show you a little later in the training how you can, with one mouse stroke, magnify all shapes on a page. And because they're vectors, they're going to be crystal clear. You're not going to lose any resolution at all. So now I hope you understand what we mean when we say that Visio 2010 is vector diagram software. Now, the middle part here is a big stickler among some individuals. And first of all, let me say by way of full disclosure, I am equally expert with Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac OS X, and various distributions of Linux. So I'm not one of those individuals who's heavily biased in any particular way. I just wanted to make that clear. In point of fact, I have all three operating systems available to me on my daily use systems in my home office. That having been said, you need to understand that Microsoft Visio is Windows only software. Whereas the major players, the most popular players of the Microsoft Office productivity suite are available in both Windows and Mac versions. Of course, I'm thinking of Word, the Word processor, Excel, the spreadsheet application, and so forth. PowerPoint would be another. Visio is made just for Windows. So of course, there's the question, well, I use Mac, what can I do? Well, depending upon how much of a geek you are as far as cross-platform stuff, you could install software like Parallels Desktop or VMware Fusion on your Mac and then install Visio 2010 on your Mac and have it run natively that way. That's one way to go. Another way is to use a Visio competitor. The main competitor in the Mac OS X space of Visio 2010 is a program called OmniGraffle. This application's been available for a long, long time, so it's very steady, and it'll give you an excellent Visio-like experience in Mac OS X. In fact, let me switch over to a web browser. We're at omnigroup.com, and this is the OmniGraffle homepage, you see nowadays with mobile computing being on the forefront, of course, Apple has led that charge. You can buy OmniGraffle not only for your Mac desktop or laptop computer, but also for your iPad. Very cool program indeed. Now, as far as truly open source variants or alternatives to Visio are concerned, there are several. The one that I personally prefer is called Dia, and it's at projects.gnome.org forward slash Dia. And if we go to screenshots, you'll see that it doesn't have anywhere near the graphical gloss or polish that either OmniGraffle or Visio have. In fact, if you look at this tool set here, this floating palette, you know what it draws to mind to me? It calls to mind the Windows 3.1 interface from the early 1990s. The purpose of this, the reason why I'm showing you Dia and OmniGraffle is simply so you have a well-rounded picture of where Visio fits in in business. Another website that you should be aware of that we'll be visiting several times throughout this training is the Visio 2010 homepage at office.microsoft.com forward slash Visio. You can always find these websites doing a simple Google or Bing search. And this site is excellent for many reasons, not the least of which is, believe it or not, for fun and for free, you can download a lot of really cool resources, in particular Visio templates and add-ins to extend the application. More on that later though. I wanted to cut on over back to Visio 2010 again to show you our first Visio drawing. Actually, this is a drawing type called a timeline, and it's remarkably easy to put these together. Now, you might be thinking, wow, how could I possibly draw something like that? You'll be amazed, and by the end of this training, you will know how to draw stuff like this. But what I'm doing here, I wanted to visualize the version history of Visio for you, and I figured what better case... Study. 